initially you did hire me and then end up not using me. The way I look at it is if someone's an expert, I'm happy to pay them for a service and take as big amount of input as I need or as little. I will be make it worth their time, regardless if I ask one question or a hundred. On this episode of AMA Podcast with Chris Milos, we had James Hollingshead back on. This is right after the two Arnold Classic top five finishes, and we discussed a little bit about how he thought about his placings. What is best? Come in super diced, possibly sacrifice some fullness, or do you come in overall with the best package to yourself with maybe a little bit of fat, a little water left, which is honestly always a question everybody who competes has to ask. And of course, the separation between Milos and James going through prep, the reasons why, and ultimately at the end of the day, they're both still friends. There's no animosity between them, which is very rare, but this episode shows it all. Check out this episode. You won't regret it. So let me jump in and ask because I know everybody wants to find out what really happened between you and me, right? <laughs> and uh, why initially you did hire me and then end up not using me. Uh, from my perspective, you are one of the elite. I mean, the amount of muscle mass you have experience. Uh, you are pro champion multiple times and all stuff. So here it is. You contact me, right? Back like, I don't know, August or something. It's yeah. okay. I'm excited. You know, you want to work with me. So, perfect. And uh, as you know, uh, for anybody that's listening, it's not like now I'm going to reinvent your diet. I'm going to tell you to eat something completely different. We literally took my we took my current diet and just tinkered a little bit. It was really Everybody's diet, you say, okay, foods that you eat normally, I would Same use same. that. I would just manipulate protein, uh, amount of carbs, protein, and timing. This is with everybody. And that's how we started. And I do think that uh, actually you were making tremendous gains. I was full as house. Yeah, all, all these Uncomfortably things. full. <laughs> then in November, kind of, we had a little talk and you, you were saying that you're a little bit down, all this stuff, you know, not having a clear things. But then you got invited for the Anon Classic. Yeah. And then we had like uh, 11 weeks. It's okay, let's uh, reintroduce everything. And, and that's how we started. Now, along the way, as I was telling to Chris, because trying to, to understand, I've seen a few times, you look fantastic. I think really, if you go 10 weeks out, 9 weeks out, 8 weeks out, some of those pictures, like, Jesus Christ. I mean, you know, when you cannot be happier with what you see. Now, again, for me, I cannot be happier. I don't know if that's the same eyes, you know, coming from you, maybe. My problem is my own head. Maybe you see it. Yeah, th there was then a uh, you know, few moments when uh, I said, like, okay, you refeed and then you refeed. And there was, for me, no need for a refeed, right? But uh, as you start doing this, you say, okay, then I just basically said, like, do you want to do it yourself? You know, in, in, in that sense, you know, for people to understand, I never ask anybody, oh, let me coach you. Oh, no, not at all. We can make that clear. I, I, if I reach out to someone, listen, I'm happy to, I'm happy to, the way I look at it is if someone's an expert, I'm happy to pay them for a service and take as big amount of input as I need or as little. Like, okay. I will be make it worth their time, regardless if I ask one question or a hundred. And, yeah. you know, some situations I might need to ask a hundred questions. Some I might need to ask one or two. And that's that. It's like I say, as far as I look at it, I'm like, I will compensate someone to be able to have access to them and to be able to ask them every question. If I get uncomfortable, ask them questions that can help me move forward. Yeah. I mean, I just want to make clear understanding because we never actually talk about it, you know, just briefly and all these people asking. So what, I, as I said, I love your physique. I love where you're at and all that stuff. So when you ask me again, to repeat, I have never in my whole life asked any athlete, let me coach you. Ever. No, no, if, if they come and they want me to coach, I, I get involved. Like I said, I don't reinvent the wheel. I don't tell you, you know, change that. No, I no. always go with this and then just watch, inspect what we expect. Yeah. I was delighted the way you look, really. Yeah. I was delighted. And then when I've seen a couple of those, like you, you feel the need, you drop the kilo and you need to refeed, like, oof. I would have let go normally, you know, it's okay. <laughs> Lose a kilo, lose mm. two kilos, you know, and see see what happened. Yeah, uh, I still think that uh, you said conditioning was good. 
but you can tell condition could have been a little bit better. Oh, 100%. So, That's why I said it earlier. I was like, me looking back at the images, I'm like, I would like to see me more dialed in. And I know that John Jewett and uh, many of you guys, you step on the scale 17 times a day. Oh, yeah. I stopped, I stopped talking <laughs> on the scales, though, for this show <laughs> when I uh, f- before I flew to the U.S. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's like nine more scales. I, I am not the scale guy, even though there is some science behind it. I love John Jewett and everything that he does. But, you know, uh, you know, for, for some people, well, like they were saying for Samson, you're 300 pounds. You can lose 20, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, and the thing is, I'm a bodybuilder, yeah? So I'm the first to look at another physique and say he could come down more. So you know what? The bottom line is this. When you get to, like, four weeks out, unfortunately, sometimes your brain just goes. And I definitely was a situation of where my brain just went. And then I was leaning on Yannicka, like, like, no tomorrow. Like, Yannicka, keep me sane, keep me sane, keep me sane, because I'm losing my fucking shit. So, you know, typical bodybuilder brain four weeks out. And then, you know, you just, you have to survive. You go into survival mode. And my survival mode, unfortunately, was uh, withdrawn, you know, get through the days, unfortunately. One thing I can highlight now is, this is what I said in the first place. If you need a, not even just, if you need a cheerleader, like someone to perk you up on a down day. Like, Milos is your guy as well. It's not just about eat this, eat that. And that's why I was really trying to put in place uh, because I knew that a time would probably come where I feel like how I did. But unfortunately, you know, I just felt the way I did and things just needed to be... I just was so reserved. I just didn't even want to train, didn't want to talk to people, you know, which is annoying because I want to enjoy bodybuilding. And unfortunately, sometimes you just don't. And... uh then it becomes a game of uh, survival. And my survival mechanism was, uh, all right, just write down notes. Don't get too complicated and just try your best. Bottom line is, social media, if it didn't exist, I would be absolutely fine about it. I was just going to say the same thing because social media does not see even my, my clients who are not even in close to your same level. They're always like... And I, and I don't want to place too much emphasis on it, Chris. I don't want to like sound like some moaner because I don't want to... I'm not a weak person. No, but- I know. Man, when I was an amateur, I breezed for a prep because it was just me and doing what I'm doing. I didn't have no voices in my head. I have to find a way going forward that doesn't involve too much allowing shit in. Well, the other thing, James, is too, in like, the, dude, I know you're a tough dude. And like, but with anybody reaching a higher and higher and higher level does come with a higher, higher amount of pressure that you put oh, on yourself a- to be better, right? You, you know, it's, yeah, you feel like if you fall, you're gonna fall very far. Yeah, you know, like and, uh, you're, that's you're constantly, the... yeah, that's a constant thought when I get close to a show, and that's when it's a little bit panicky. And you know what it's like when you panic, you do whatever you can do to not die. Yeah, and my, you know, fucking, that's just how I am. Unfortunately, that's why I find it difficult. It's funny because if you, if I'm just training and I don't think of shows, I'm perfect. But the minute, like, the world's like, James is doing a show. But, you know, the Arnold, you can't avoid it's invite only and your name's down, your name's down. It's like, okay, everybody knows. So I think considering everything, obviously, I had a leg injury as well. It was yeah, really bad. Yeah, you said that, uh, but that, I was watching all of your pictures and videos and I couldn't see it. Yeah, you know, I was which trying one? to be clever with that presentation, man. This injury that I had was one of those ones where most people, I know, wouldn't have done a show. From the minute they got the injury, they would have said there's no prep. I was just like, no, fuck that. And that was, that was like before I even started dieting. Yeah. Fortunately, you have that uh, full sweeping ties, you know, adductors and, and hamstrings. So, you know, it, it didn't hurt you. Your legs were among the best on the stage. That's for sure. It's a, bit clever, knee. It's a clever putting your knee, turning the knee out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. Chris, what do you think? Six weeks out, the way uh, he looked, if somebody just picked him up and put him on stage, would he be ready? I, re- I mean, I have to find a picture six weeks out. Yeah, I remember coming down, being very impressed and looking like that he was ahead. Yeah. But this is the other thing, right? And this is, in my experience, sometimes with l- the right lighting, with no tan on, you have more lines. And then when Lightful. you put tan on and you carve up and you say you pull the water down a little bit to get the little dryness in certain areas, certain lines start to fade and you're not quite yeah. as crazy dry detailed like that typical Duran Yates picture like what four weeks out right yeah. where he's just like grainy hard see-through the second that tan goes on with pasty white people like us like it does change that look you know so like 
to some degree, do you have to take that extra mile and go down further? I think you have to go down further, man. That's you know? the lesson. I think you just got to go to the point where you're ridiculous. 